Okay, well, welcome everybody. My name is Liz Anderson. I'm the program coordinator for FIMC. And thank you for joining us. And during this crazy, challenging time that we've all been through, I hope that whatever your summer was, that it was restful and safe and healthy. Um, we're doing a webinar series to start off the school year and finish the summer. Um, the first one that we have here is Introduction to Braille Blaster. Um, and so as I just said, if you want to have closed captions on, you can press that button in your Zoom menu bar. And for the chat panel, make sure you select all panelists and attendees so everyone can see what you want to contribute. And before I go on, just to give everyone a brief overview of what FIMC is, we are a statewide discretionary project with the Florida Department of Education. And um, we serve students statewide and their teachers and we do um, Braille and large print textbooks, professional development like we're doing here, student and family events, a loan library. If you wanna learn more about our services, go to our website, which is FIMCBI.org to learn all about what we have to offer. And we actually just launched a new website, which we're very excited about. So be sure to go check that out. Okay, so we talked about our closed captions and how you can contribute to the conversation. And there are, there's one handout for this webinar and it's on our website. So if you go to our um, events page and the link for this specific webinar, you'll see the link to the handout there. And you also wanna make sure you have Braille Blaster. If you wanna follow along on your computer, you can have Braille Blaster downloaded on your own device. Um, and the link to that is on that page on our website as well. And we are recording, so in about a week or so, we will post the recording and um, anything else to our website as well on the past events webpage, which you can see there. So in-service credit information. If you are looking for in-service credit for your Teach Florida teacher certification or ACVREP credit, we do offer those, we give you 1.5 points per webinar. So the magic code that you need for the opening credit is um, free. Okay, so free is the word that you want to remember. And how you obtain this credit, I'll be explaining that at the end of the webinar. So our presenter today is William Freeman. He is from the American Printing House for the Blind. He is a certified Braille transcriber who contributed to the, create, <clears throat> to the creation of Braille Blaster. So we're very fortunate to have him here with us. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and turn it over to William. And Rosemary, the opening code is free. F-R-E-E, -E, free. Okay, um, Zoom. Com Zoom completely changes the interface whenever someone <laughs> stops sharing, and so then you have to find the share button again. I know, they like to keep it uh, interesting for you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, um, so I should now be sharing my screen, and thank you all for coming. I, uh, I really appreciate your time, and this is going to be the Braille Blaster Basics webinar. And so I'm gonna try my best to gear this towards you all. So if you have specific things that you want me to cover, um, please send your questions through the chat, or if you'd prefer, maybe raise your hand and uh, Liz will get you the microphone so that you can uh, talk. But if you've got questions, please send your questions and I will do my best to address them. The main things we're going to cover today are we're going to start with the basics. So just how typing text works, applying styles, applying emphasis. Um, we're going to go into setting up an embosser. We're going to go into how you can open other file types. So what other file types you can open and how that works. Uh, that I think is going to be really helpful for folks that are just starting to use Braille Blaster because uh, you'll find there's a whole lot you can do with Braille Blaster without really using very much of Braille Blaster. So 
while you're getting comfortable with the rest of the program, you can kind of start there. And then at the very end, uh, we're gonna go over uh, math in Braille Blaster. This isn't gonna be as in-depth as our uh, math presentation that we do later in the week, uh, but it'll just be a little smattering of like, okay, here's math, here's kind of how math works. And so those are gonna be our topics. Uh, we only have about an hour, I think, for this one. Um, so we'll just do our best to get through that and cover those topics in a way that uh, helps everybody. But if you've got questions, please send your questions and I will try to work them in as I can. Uh, if I don't get to your question, uh, you can always uh, send questions to, and I'm putting this through the chat, uh, bb-support at tech.aph.org. So sending that through the chat. If you have questions that we don't get to today, or if while using Braille Blaster you have some questions that you run into, uh, you can um, send those to that email address. All right, so let's get started. Um, I have Braille Blaster, I'm sharing my screen. I have Braille Blaster up on the screen now. And I have, this is the latest version of Braille Blaster from the website. You can download Braille Blaster at, I'm gonna be saying Braille Blaster a lot in the next minute and a half, um, at brailleblaster.org. And it is, a, if you haven't heard of it, it's a free Braille transcription program. So if you've never downloaded Braille Blaster, you, you need to just go download it. Um, it's, it's, it's free and you might as well have it, you might as well try it. It can be another tool in your toolbox, uh, no matter what your familiarity uh, with Braille. But I am using version 1.1.25, and so that's the version on the website. You can find your version by going to help and then about Braille Blaster. So if you've already downloaded it, go ahead and have it open. And if you wanna know what version you're using, you can go help about Braille Blaster. Uh, if you are on 1.1.24, so version 24, um, your experience is gonna be very similar to mine. So don't worry if um, you're not on the exact same version as me. If you're on a much older version, you're probably gonna have a, a much different experience. So you might go ahead and update, but it should be fine. If you can't follow along uh, on your own copy of Braille Blaster, I think you're gonna be fine just following along with uh, the sound of my voice and with the image if, that, if that's accessible to you. And we should be good. So I will get started. So when you first open Braille Blaster, your cursor is going to be um, in the print view. I, oh, I see a person's having an issue with the Mac. Let me address that real quick. If you're on the Mac, there is an issue if you're not in the store, you have to go into your security options and allow Braille Blaster to open. That can be kind of complicated and we're working on getting instructions up on the website. So you might be better off just following along. Uh, Braille Blaster is, is supported by Windows, Macintosh and Linux, but we have some issues with Mac that we're working on. The main thing is it's a security thing. Uh, if, you're, if your program isn't programmed on a Mac, uh, Apple doesn't want you to be able to open it on a Mac easily. So we're working on that, but you can open it. You just have to go in and see your security options and give it special permissions. Um, probably better off to just follow along. So right now my cursor is in the print view and there's nothing really on the screen yet because uh, there's no text. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put some text on the screen so that we can get an idea of what's going on here. So I'm just gonna write, this is Braille Blaster. And that's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna type that text. I didn't press enter. I didn't click anywhere. I didn't do anything. I just typed that. So the first thing you'll probably notice is there's no Braille. So I've got this print, but no Braille. And that's because all of the Braille is gonna get derived from what you do in the print view and it's gonna wait for you to press enter or move your cursor, so up or down arrow, uh, just moving your cursor out of the item before it updates the translation. So I've got this is Braille Blaster, exclamation mark. I'm gonna press enter. Now it gets translated. So now all of my views get filled out. And I start in the print view, and that's where I'm gonna be doing the majority of my work. So typing text, applying emphasis, uh, applying styles, 
you do all of that in the print view. The Braille view at this time is mainly for reference. So you've got the, the Braille view there and you can check out your Braille while you're working. If you're using a screen reader, you can use control tab to move your focus between the views. Uh, if you're a mouse user, you can click over in the Braille view to check it out. And every line of the Braille view is going to match the same line in the print view. So like uh, my, first, my first example is just one line. Um, but if I go ahead and I'll just type something longer. So this is a second line and I am going to type some more text so that I can show you how the margins are created after the text is translated. So I just typed a bunch of text and right now it's all appearing on one line. It's just one very long line. And if I press enter, that text now gets translated. And so now I have four lines of text and those same lines of text all appear the exact same in the Braille view. So like my third line is some more text so that I can show you how the margins are. It's the exact same line over here in the Braille view. Some more text so that I can show you how the margins are. And if I go in there and edit, um, so let's say instead of saying show you how the margins are, uh, I wanted to say uh, so I can uh, demonstrate. So I'm gonna get rid of show and write demonstrate. So I just highlighted show, I typed demonstrate. Now I've got demonstrate written there in the print view, but the braille view still says show, still says I can show you. Well, if I move my cursor up, I'm still inside the same item, doesn't change. Press up one more time and it moves me up to this is Braille Blaster. Now it changes. So the moment I left the item with my cursor, it updated. So now it says demonstrate in the Braille view uh, and therefore matches the print view. So that's just something that, that maybe people aren't expecting. You know, maybe they're expecting as I type, it should be updating the Braille view. And that's something we're working on, but we found at the moment it is still kind of slow for um, older computers. So we're trying to work on a solution that's happy uh, you know, for everybody, whether you have a really fast new computer or an older computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and type a third line. This is a third item. Okay. So I, if you're following along, I the you just wanna have can you also hit enter at the bottom of the file to have it change it? Yes. So right now I actually am at the bottom of the file. Um, I have the Braille, the Braille page number here, but pressing enter or moving your cursor will update the translation. The only thing is you wanna be careful, you wanna be careful that you don't add a blank line where you don't want one. I mean, it's easy enough to remove the blank line. Um, so like, if I update the second item, uh, margins are created um, after the text is translated and it is great. Um, so I just typed some text there. If I hit enter here, it's gonna add a blank line. See, so I had my cursor between two items and pressing enter makes a blank line. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my favorite hotkey, which is control Z for undo, so I'm gonna undo that blank line. Um, so that's just one reason though why you'd wanna be aware that moving your cursor is enough to update your translation, because right there, that'd be the perfect time. Uh, I'm just gonna type I love Braille Blaster on the second item. Uh, so now I've got I love Braille Blaster. Now I just move my cursor with the down arrow to update the translation to make sure I don't get that unnecessary blank line. But yeah, if you're on the last item, and you're not worried about adding any blank lines because there's no text there, uh, you know, go ahead and just press enter. All right, so if you're following along, I've got three items here. You wanna have three items on your screen. Doesn't matter uh, what three items, just three pieces of text, three paragraphs. The default style of Braille Blaster is paragraph. We, we're calling it body text. 
and it uses the margins three and one with no blank lines when it proceeds or follows itself. So I've just got three items with no blank lines between. So I wanna style this middle item. So it's the one in, in my example, it's this is the second line and I'm gonna type blah, blah, blah. So to update the style of this item, I can have my cursor on the item. So like I click just you know anywhere on the item, doesn't matter where. I could highlight the item uh, and though I could highlight multiple items. So if I wanted to style all three of these items, I could, I could highlight all three items. Right now, I just wanna style the second item. So the easiest way to do that is to just have your cursor on that item. So then you go up to styles and you're gonna find there under options, you're gonna see basics, caption, basic captions, heading, list, poetry, and so on. These are all of the style categories. So the first one is basic. This is all of kind of your, just your, your normal styles, so your paragraph styles. So blocked text, that's gonna be one and one. Body text, that's gonna be three and one. These are the margins. So blocked text is gonna start in cell one, and then the next line is gonna be in cell one. Body text, three and one. So starts in three, basically it's indented, and then it runs over to cell one. Centered, that's gonna be text that is centered, but it's not gonna add any extra blank lines. And then we've got the displayed styles. So if you're not a Braille transcriber, or if you don't work with Braille a lot, you maybe aren't as familiar with the, uh, the concept of an item being displayed. But basically the item is gonna be preceded and followed by blank lines, and the margins are gonna get pushed over to the right, so they start a little deeper into the line. I'm not gonna go through every single style, but you definitely, I think you wanna be familiar with the basic styles. And then the next category that's gonna be really useful for folks is the heading category. Here's where you'll find cell five, cell seven, and centered headings. So there's all your headings. And then the next category is lists. So we wanna make this second item a list item. So we go to the list category, and then we're gonna find the list category, it's broken down by level. So each level has different numbers of styles in it. So a, a one level list only has one style. A two level list has two styles. I think you'll notice the pattern, uh, three levels, three styles. And so each of these styles corresponds to the level. Let's just make a one level list. And the style that's there is L13. So the L stands for list, the one and the three stands for the margins. So it starts in cell one, it runs over into cell three. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that style and then the style will be applied to the second item. So the moment I did that, several things happened. So one, we have this view over on the left, that's the style view. That updated. Now for that item, instead of saying body text, it says L13. The next thing is the braille and print margins updated. So now that item, instead of being in three and then one, is now in one and then three. So it starts in cell one, and then every line after that is indented into cell three. Same thing happens in the, it happens in the print and the braille view. It, the cell position is definitely more obvious in the, um, the braille view, because obviously it, the, the braille view is based on cells. The print view doesn't really have cells, it just has letters. But I think you'll notice that the, the print view is indented. And you can also use the status bar. There's a status bar at the bottom of the screen. It has your print page number, your braille page number, line, cell, indent, and style information. And if you're using a screen reader, you can access that. Each, each screen reader should have a uh, hotkey to access status bars and things like that. And so you should be able to access that with one of your screen reader hotkeys. It'll vary depending on what screen reader you're using. And the last thing that happens that I'll point out here is the item is preceded and followed by blank lines. 
And so that's going to happen while you're using Braille Blaster. It's going to um, try to contextually add styles based on what you do. So it knows that a list is preceded and followed by a blank line. So it puts in a, these blank lines for you. Now, you're not tied into this. You can go in, so I, like if I'll put my cursor before the item and I'll just press delete. So I can remove that blank line that it added. I can add it back in if I want to by pressing enter. I can add another blank line. Whatever it is I need to do, I can do it. But Braille Blaster is going to do its best to contextually add and remove blank lines as needed uh, to help you uh, make sure that you're following the rules of Formats 2016 and UEB. So I'm going to get rid of the blank lines that I added and changed by using Control Z. So Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. So now I'm back where I started. So now what I want to do is on this third item, I want to apply the same style again. So I want two list items. So what I'm going to do, I could go styles, list, list one level, L13, and just apply it again. But to save time, I'm going to go styles, and then at the very top, it says repeat last style. The hotkey is control R. So I could use the hotkey, so I'll just I'll put my cursor there, control R. And then it applies that same style again to the third item. And again, the style view updates, the margins of the item update, the blank line actually gets removed. So rather than add a blank line, it removes a blank line. That's because Braille Blaster is treating this as one list. It's not going to treat it as two lists. Now this could come up if you are, you know, if you're working on a file and you have a list followed by another list, if those two lists have the same number of levels, Braille Blaster isn't going to know that they're not one list. So, you know, instead of imagining I have, you know, I have two items here, but imagine instead I had 10 items and it was actually two lists and they were supposed to be separated. You know, I would need to go in and tell it, uh, you know, put a blank line in there. Just put my cursor in where, where I need to, press enter, and then I'm done. I don't have to worry about it anymore. I don't have to think about it anymore. It'll be taken care of. But that is one of the places where context is going to escape the program. That's still, uh, the advantage we have over artificial intelligence is our ability to understand context. So we should use it and flaunt it uh, until, until the AI has it as well. And then uh, nobody has to work anymore and we can all just write poetry. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. The, the, the next thing I'd like to do is show more of how Braille Blaster can try to automate formatting for you. So we have the item at the top, this is Braille Blaster. And I wanna make that a heading. And so I wanna make it a cell five heading. So I've got my cursor on the item, and I go up to styles, I go down to heading, and then, you know, the very first one there, cell five heading. So I just click that, and now it applies that style. And again, it removes the blank line. And this is because of the rule that you do not put a blank line between a list and a cell five heading. So again, it's, it's adding and removing blank lines. It's looking at what style comes before the item and what style comes after the item, and then deciding whether or not a blank line should go there based on you know, the rules of formats 2016. And I can always override it uh, if I need to. Were there any questions about what we've done so far? I know this is pretty basic stuff, but I wanted to make sure that folks knew about how, okay, we have somebody raising their hand. All right, I think I've unmuted you. If you. Well, it won't let me unmute you. Am I unmuted now? Yes. Okay, I'm Sharla, by the way. Um, when I was, I was following along and typing you, typing along with you, and then um, you had typed in on the left, on the second to the last line, I love Braille Blaster. And for some reason, um, Braille Blaster was thrown to the next line. 
and I have not been able to figure out how to um, get it back on the line because it does not look the same as yours on the screen and the braille is different. The braille is, you've got, so when you get into something where it's, do you understand what I'm saying? Um, I think so. It, it says, and I tried to back, I tried to backspace it to get the Braille Blaster back on the correct line like you have it. Uh -huh. And it's dragged the word love now to <laughs> the line with the Braille Blaster. It sounds, so. I'm not sure, but it sounds like maybe your margins are different than mine. Oh, I didn't, I've never done it. So I've just followed along with you. I've never, I just downloaded this morning. So I've never actually yeah. worked in Braille Blaster. So. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure um without looking at your screen um yeah but it sounds like you're using different margins so if you go to settings page properties that's where you set up your page size and so the standard page is 11 and a half by 11. you can so also do shows. letter legal and then there's lines per page and cells per line it's all the um, same as what you have it's just it's default mm -hmm. yep, and then yeah. So if everything's Thanks. default, I'm not really sure what's different about your setup. Oh, it's not okay. super important that Braille Blaster went to the next line. Okay. Um, the only other thing is under a translate. So the next tab of settings is translation settings. And mm -hmm. here's where, so the default is UEB. You're probably also set up for UEB, I would guess. I didn't do it. I just downloaded it and it came up just the way it was downloaded. I haven't gone in and done anything because I know nothing. I'm, I'm totally green on this. Mm -hmm. So everything would be, however, downloaded okay. to my computer because I just did it less a few minutes before the class. I'm sure it's just something, uh, I don't know if you typed anything differently or if you typed it exactly like, and it is great, or if you did you type the word demonstrate, I'm sure it's something like that. I wouldn't worry yeah. about it too much. Yeah, uh, no, I, I did don't all wanna... the changes except the first, that one sentence that you had deleted. I didn't type that sentence. Okay. So yeah, I'm not sure. To, okay, that's all Without right. looking just, at it, I'm not sure what the why yours is different, but I don't think it's okay. going to be a big deal. It's not. Okay. I don't think it's anything we're going to have to uh, worry about. Uh, okay, it's I just affect. wanted to make sure. I'm yeah. Sorry no, about I that. appreciate. I didn't mean to take so much time. No, no, no. You're fine. Uh, no, I appreciate you asking a question. I appreciate you reaching out. I just um, maybe after we can go over it. Uh, okay. If you want to save the file, you can send it to me. And I'm, I, I just, I know it's going to be something little like that, that once I look at your screen or look at your file, I know it immediately, but okay. it's going to be a, kind of a wild goose chase over the phone. That's fine. Never mind. Um, the other thing though, that could be different is your translation settings. And so the default is UEB. We also do EBAE, and then we have uncontracted versions of each. Uh, we also have Cherokee plus Nimeth. That's something we've added. And UEB plus Nimeth and Spanish uh, US. So those are your different uh, translation settings. All right. Nope, everything is UEB, so I'm cool. Yeah. I'll just, I didn't want to take any more time. Cool, thanks. There's a um, question in the chat about uh, setting up headings as macros? Mm -hmm. So we have, um, they're called loadouts. So if you go to style, configure, and then loadouts, and that has a menu and it has all of the style categories in it. So there's miscellaneous, basic, captions, heading, and each thing has its own hotkey. And if you select heading, what it does is it sets you up in the heading loadout. And now alt plus a number will make that associated style. So alt plus one is cell five. I'm pressing it now. Alt plus two is cell seven. And alt plus three is centered heading. And so there's so many styles that for right now, 
we've just got them arranged by category and then you use the uh, the hotkey. We, we've got version two on the web. Version two is something we're still working on, but in version two, we've got it to where you can configure your loadout. So you can set up like, I want alt one to be cell five heading. I want alt two to be paragraphs. I want alt three to be list items. And that way you can just have hotkeys for, you know, 10, because it's alt plus a number. So 10 of your most used styles. And then you just have to remember which ones are which. And then the menu will track that as well so that you, if you forget, you can refer to the menu. So that's one way to use um, hotkeys with styles. And then, uh, all right. So now we'll go into applying emphasis just very quickly because applying emphasis can be a little differently can work, works a little differently inside Braille Blaster than maybe you're used to. So if you want emphasized text, it's not like a word processor, like Word, say. You don't, so if I wanted to type bold word and I wanted it to be bold, with Word, I would, I would press Control B, the hotkey, or I'd use the menu item, you know, or I'd go emphasis bold, and then I would type the text. Well, with Braille Blaster, it's gonna, you're gonna type the text first. So I'll type bold, let that translate. Now I highlight bold, and now I can go up here into the menu, find bold, or I can go emphasis bold, or I can use the hotkey control B. So you type the text, then you highlight it, and then you use the hotkey. And we have several emphasis styles. So there's bold, italics, underline. Script is one that folks might not be familiar with. Script is when the, the print is attempting to look like handwriting. And so you wanna make that clear, like maybe a, a Civil War letter in a history book or something like that. And then the other thing is we have the transcriber defined type forms. And then those, you know, if you go emphasis, transcriber defined type forms, uh, that opens another sub menu. And then you've got defined one, transcriber defined one, transcriber defined two, three, four, and five. And then those numbers correspond to the same emphasis used in the UEB manual. And these are when you have something that's neither bold, italics, underline, or script. And it's important for the student to know that. So say it's yellow highlighting. So you could make that your transcriber defined one. So you would use transcriber defined one. That represents yellow highlighting. And then you'd make sure to tell the student, like, in the following example, I've used this symbol to represent uh, yellow highlighting. So that's what these are for, because there's just so many different types of emphasis in print. And uh, below that, we have some kind of macro tools. Uh, these are going to be more if you're opening like a big NIMAS file or something like that. But these will let you remove emphasis from a lot of text at once. And uh, there's several. And I, they're, they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you just go to the emphasis menu, they're there at the bottom. Uh, just reading the titles should probably tell you what they do. The main one is remove emphasis from selection. So if I highlight this item and go emphasis, remove emphasis from selection, uh, the hotkey is control plus shift plus R. It'll remove all emphasis from the text that I highlighted. All right. So that's uh, typing text, uh, applying styles, and applying emphasis. Were there any questions about that, about any of the stuff that I've done so far? Okay. So again, the default is UEB. We have several other codes that you can use. We also do UEB plus Nimeth. Could folks maybe let me know through the chat too, do you all mainly use UEB math or Nimeth math? Just if you don't mind, send through the chat which, um, which type of math you're more likely to use. I'm always interested about, you know, how it's different in each state and even different within within the same school or the same state. Okay, so I'm getting a lot of UEB. Yeah, Florida's a choice state. Yeah, 
but yeah, getting a lot of UEB math. Okay, I'm going to cover both later, but it's good good to know. All right. So let's go into opening files. So this is a file that you know we've created, and we can save this file. You know, so you can just go file save, and then you just want to give the uh, give the file a name and click save. And if you're using the latest version, it gets saved as a BBZ file. If you're using an older version, it'll get saved as a BBX file. It's not really going to matter. Uh, both are going to open fine. Uh, both are going to work basically the same way. But go ahead and save this file if you want to. You can also go file, save BRF slash PEF. So this will save either a BRF or a PEF of the thing you just created. BRF, I think everybody's going to know what a BRF is, a Braille ready file. That's a Braille file that you can share with folks. Uh, PEF is basically the same thing, but where you might think of a BRF as a text file, you can think of a PEF as sort of like a PDF. So where a, P, a BRF is accessible, so you could send a BRF to somebody and they could read it on their Braille display, or they could even open it up and, and read it uh, inside Braille Blaster or on any other program that opens BRFs like Duxbury or per Perky Duck or uh, Braille Zephyr, which we have on our website. A PEF is not accessible because it is an image of the Braille. Uh, the whole reason PEF exists is it's better for graphics. So some people use PEF, but the main thing you're going to want is to save as BRF. Uh, so you can share it with folks for their Braille displays or for easy embossing. So I, I could go ahead and save this as Braille Blaster as a BRF. I'm going to save it to my desktop so it's easy to find. Just click Save. Now if I open that back up, it's going to open in the Braille preview. It's not going to open in the print view. And that's because Braille Blaster does not edit uh, BRFs. It edits, um, it edits lots of file types. There's lots of file types that, are, that we can work with. But BRFs, it just can, you can view them. So you can review the text that's there. You can emboss them. So you can go File, Emboss, and then Emboss them. Uh, but you can't edit them. And the reason you can't edit them is because we have this other program called Braille Zephyr. So I'll actually go to BrailleBlaster.org. And then if you go to BrailleBlaster.org, go up to the top, you'll find the tab Braille Zephyr. This is a free program that we've created, and it is a BRF editor. So you can use it to edit and create BRFs. Since we already had Braille Zephyr, it's uh, free and available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. We just didn't see a point in kind of making Braille Blaster more complicated by adding all those features in. So if you really want to edit BRFs, you can get Braille Zephyr to do that. All right. Should cover embossing. Since I mentioned embossing, we should go ahead and cover that real quick. If I go to File, Emboss, it'll bring up the Emboss menu if you've created an embosser. If you haven't created an embosser, it will ask you to make an embosser. So you can make an embosser by going to Settings, Embosser Settings. So it'll open up the Settings tab, and then you want to tab over to Embosser Settings. Um, yes. So the question is, can you go back and edit the BBX and then save to BRF with the changes. Yes, so you can you can always open a, that's why I would recommend saving first as a BBX, because you can open the BBX, edit it, save it, emboss it. You don't really need the BRF. The only reason to make a BRF is if you have a friend, you say, that's really lame, that doesn't have Braille Blaster, uh, BRF would be a way that you could share the Braille with them. Another reason to make a BRF is for reading on a uh, like a note taker. So say they have a, a note taker like the uh, the the ones we just put out from uh, from APH, the Chameleon and the Mantis. So say they have the Chameleon or the Mantis, you could give them a BRF. They can open that 
on either of those Braille displays uh, or any note taker and then read it on their note taker. So that's the only reason why you need to make a BRF. One of the great things about Braille Blaster is you make the BBX file or the BBZ file and you can emboss from there. You don't need to make a BRF in order to emboss. So I've actually got two embossers, so I'll get rid of them. So I've gotten rid of my two embossers, so I need to make one. So I'm gonna click add. When you click add, that opens up the edit embosser configuration. And first thing is to name your embosser. So I'm gonna name mine Pix Blaster. And then the next is you select your embosser. And so you can name yours whatever, whatever your embosser name would be. So then you pick your embosser, and this is gonna be a list of all the embossers that are communicating with your computer. So I have several embossers that are set up now. So I could pick Phoenix or Page Blaster, or it's also gonna have my printer, um, Pix Blaster. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the Pix Blaster. And then the next thing is the manufacturer. So this is gonna be, you know, there's View Plus, there's Generic, there's Irie, there's Index, Enabling Technologies, APH, and then Brelo. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick APH, since that's who's made this embosser. And then I'm gonna pick between my models, Pix Blaster or Page Blaster. You could have picked, uh, let's say, uh, Enabling, which has Phoenix, Trident, Thomas, Juliet, Romeo. Uh, there's all sorts of options here. Now, if you go through these options and your embosser is not among them, which is possible, there's lots of embossers. Embossers are kind of an amazing, uh, they're, they're kind of amazing in that they last forever. They're like cars from the 50s uh, in that they, they just refuse to, they refuse to die. So if yours is not listed, you can go to generic. It's the second one, it's right below View Plus. Go to generic, and then your model options are going to be text only, text with margins, or graphics embosser. You're probably gonna to wanna to just pick text with margins. Uh, text only is gonna be used very, very rarely. Uh, it's mainly if you use loose sheet, uh, loose sheet embosser. And graphics embosser is still in testing, so don't worry about that right now. But yeah, text with margins. So try to find your embosser if it's listed, and then if it's not listed, then use generic. And it's really important, like if I go to enabling and you wanna pick exactly your embosser. So a, a Juliet 120 behaves way differently than a Juliet Pro, and a Romeo 60 behaves way differently than the other one as well. So you wanna pick your exact embosser or you're gonna get bad behavior. Um, so I'll go back to APH Pix Blaster. And so now this embosser is ready. I shouldn't ever have to mess with it again, but if I want to, I can click Edit to make any changes. And I can go ahead and click Add to add another one if I need to. Yes. So the question is, the embosser device will show up as long as we have installed the embosser and drivers, and yes. So that's gonna be a separate process. You'll need to you know, install the drivers, set up your embosser, you know, and that's gonna be its own, its own process between you and your embosser manufacturer. Um, and that, you know, that can be a pain, but once you get your embosser communicating with your computer, then, then it'll appear in that list. So, like here, here I have Phoenix and the Pix Blaster and the Page Blaster. All right. So that's embossing. So once you've set up your embosser, it's just as simple as going file, emboss, and then you, you can set your page range if you need to, you can change your number of copies, whatever it is you need to do, and then just click OK and it'll emboss. So someone's worried they might have missed saving BRF or BBX. So saving just the file as is is very simple. It's just file and then save. The hotkeys control S. And so that'll save it as a BBX or a BBZ. And then you can open it and edit it. You can emboss it. You can share it with your cool friends that have Braille Blaster. And then if you need a, uh, a more agnostic file, so a file that's not going to be specific to Braille Blaster, you can go file, save BRF, 
and then that will let you save a BRF that you can share with folks that don't have Braille Blaster or that want to use this file with their um, note taker or other um, kind of Braille display. All right, so we've gone over saving and embossing. Were there any questions before we move on to file types? All right, we're running, running a little short on time, but so relaxed Braille, is relaxed Braille gonna be an option? It will be an option. It's something we're working on adding, um, but it's not in there just yet. So we are working on relaxing contractions. The question, there's a question about save as. So file save is what most people are gonna use. Save as is if you wanna change the name of the file. So if I go control S uh, test, that's gonna give that's gonna save the file. And then control S from that point on will just save it. So I'm pressing control S now, and nothing's happening on the screen because I'm just going file save. So if I go file save. Now if I want to save it with a new name, I can go file save as and write test two. And so now it's test two instead of test. All right. So if you want to force contractions to appear a certain way, so like let's say I want Braille Blaster to be uncontracted. Uh, maybe the student doesn't know the ER contraction. What you can do, so let's say I just want to get rid of ER, is I can highlight ER, I can go to Change Translation, Uncontracted. So I right clicked. You can also use the Context Menu key on your keyboard if you're not a mouse user. You can also go up to Tools, Change Translation, and then you have the options Direct and Uncontracted. So the second option is Uncontracted. So that's gonna uncontract ER. You could also use Find and Replace, and we have a video on our YouTube channel. You can get there by going to brailleblaster.org and checking out our documentation page. We have a video about find and replace. I'm gonna to have to refer you to the video just because I'm not gonna have time to go over find and replace right now. But yeah, you could search for the ER contraction and force it to be uncontracted uh, using find and replace. And then that would, that would help you. We're definitely working on a better option. So let's get into file opening. So we open a lot of different file types. We open our own files, so BBX and BBZ and BRF and BRL, but we also open DOCX, which is Word files. We open EPUB files. If you haven't heard of EPUB files, they are the future of digital publishing. And the one I shared for this training is an EPUB file that I got from Project Gutenberg. Uh, and then we also have HTML files, so different types of HTML files. Those are websites. And uh, the videos are at brailleblaster.org. So if you go to brailleblaster.org and go to the documentation tab, you'll find all the videos. So let's start with docx. So I'm gonna open a docx file that I have. So I'm gonna go to So this is, I'm opening it now. This is called analyzing the text. This is a docx file that I have. And I'm opening it in Word first, just to demonstrate. So if you've never used Braille Blaster before, just know you can work in Word, which you probably have used, um, and create files very easily. So this file was made using just standard Word styles. So the first item is a heading one, analyzing the text. After that, we use the normal style. So that's just a regular paragraph. Below that is the list style. We made this with the, uh, with the list tool, so a numbered list inside Word. You also could have used the bulleted list tool inside Word. Uh, and, and then the next thing is a, uh, another heading. This is a heading two. It's using just the regular heading two style inside Word. After that, heading three, again, just the regular heading style. And then below that, three paragraphs using just the regular normal uh, paragraph style. 
So this is just a regular Word file. If I then open it in Braille Blaster, so I'll, I'll have to find it. So test files, docx, analyzing the text, opens the file, all of that information is gonna get converted for Braille. So the heading one becomes a centered heading. The heading two becomes a cell five heading. The heading three becomes a cell seven heading. My numbered list stays as a numbered list. So it's now getting the L13 style. There was emphasis in the file as well. There was a lot of bold. That All that has carried over. So even if you've never used Braille Blaster before, you can start by making files in Word using things you already know how to do with Word. Save that file. It'll just save as a docx. And then go to Braille Blaster and go file, open, and then find the file. So in my case, it's right here, you know, analyzing the text in this folder. And so that's a very easy way to start making Braille Blaster a part of your uh, workflow. As far as EPUBs go, so the file I shared with you is an EPUB. You can find a lot of great EPUBs. Just go to your favorite browser and search for, it's called Project Gutenberg. And it'll be the, it'll be the first thing that comes up, gutenberg.org. This is a great website uh, for educators. It is a um, collection of 60,000 free eBooks. And they're, they're free. And if you, you can browse their catalog and it has like their most frequently downloaded. These are all classics. So Pride and Prejudice, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, uh, Moby Dick, uh, The Yellow Wallpaper. I've never heard of that one. I have an English degree. I'm not sure what's what's up with that book. Uh, the works of Edgar Allan Poe, Frankenstein. You can download any of these files, open them up. So let's just start with, we'll go with Frankenstein. I'll click on Frankenstein, find the one that says EPUB. Some of them say EPUB, no images, EPUB, images. It's not gonna matter. The images aren't gonna be used. So don't worry about that. But download the EPUB and then go to Braille Blaster, file, open. So like the file I shared with you was uh, Moby Dick. So if I find that in my list here, so I'll just open the, the no images version. That's gonna open in Braille Blaster. It does take it a second. Um, these books can be very long. Um, the 19th century uh, is pretty famous, I think, for having very long books. They didn't have TV yet. Um, so once the book opens, it's basically done. Like there's things we can do, like we can use find and replace to get rid of, there's these little um, hard spaces throughout the work that we could use find and replace to get rid of. Again, the find and replace video will help you figure that out. But if you wanted to open this file and share it with a student as a BRF, just for casual reading, I mean, it's basically ready to go. This is a great file for casual reading. If you're gonna give it to a student and assign it to them, you know, use what you've learned so far, watch the find and replace video, clean up the file a little bit before you, If you definitely if you're gonna assign it to a student, you wanna spend time with it and make sure it's a good file. But if it's just for casual fun reading, you can almost instantaneously get something that's ready for a casual fun read uh, using these uh, free EPUBs from Project Gutenberg. Uh, are there any questions about uh, file opening um, that folks are wondering about? A question we get a lot is, does Braille Blaster open PDFs? It does not. So PDFs are really complicated and they're very visual. They're very hard to open. But what I can say is the uh, the wonderful Microsoft Corporation has spent their time and money opening EPUBs or opening PDFs. So if you have a PDF, I recommend opening it in Word. So find your PDF, open it in Word, then save that Word file, 
uh, and, you know, it'll save as a docx and then open that docx uh, in uh, Braille Blaster. So will this open a Microsoft Word math document? No, not at the moment. So we cannot yet handle uh, the way that Word creates math, but we're actually working with some folks, some really uh, great folks out of the Northeast on a way to convert those Word files in a way that we can open them. So that's something we're looking at. Will it open an RTF? No, it will not open an RTF. But again, if you have Word, you can open that RTF in Word, save it as a docx, and then open that docx in Braille Blaster. Uh, but yeah, we can open docx, EPUB, HTML, and then different types of uh, LaTeX files. So that's going to be, that's the way the, the math that we can work with at the moment is LaTeX and MathML. You've probably heard of MathML. I don't know if you've heard of LaTeX. Some folks probably have. Um, but I'll cover that with a little bit of time we have left. We also have the question of uh, get the books displayed for the student in uncontracted or is it all contracted? So like by default, it's going to be contracted, but you can go to settings, translation settings, so the default's UEB. So I've got this UEB file. I could save this, I could emboss this, whatever it is I want to do, but then I could also go in here and change it to UEB uncontracted. So I just click that drop down, change it to UEB uncontracted. If I click OK, it's going to affect just this one file. If I click make default, it's going to make all future files uh, UEB uncontracted as well. But I, let's say I just want to do it to this one file. I'll go ahead and click OK. It will take it a second because it's going to actually be opening the entire file again to retranslate it. But the cool thing is you're going to keep all of your styling. So if you've done any styling since you'd opened the file, you're going to keep all that. You won't have to redo it. But now I have an uncontracted version of the file. Got the question, does Braille Blaster deal with tactile graphics? Yes, it's not in a way that's really done. So I don't want to go too deep into it. It might confuse folks, but it's something we're working on and we're going to continue to improve on. Uh, but uh, yeah, expect more documentation and videos about that topic once we have a, something that's a little more solid, something that we can really be proud of. Uh, right now we can just really just add uh, image placeholders. So you find the place where you want your image to appear. You go insert image placeholder. It's going to ask you how many lines. So let's say it's 10 lines. Click submit, and then it puts in 10 blank lines for you to then you could then open this and put your graphic there in a separate program. But I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. Let me very quickly just cover ASCII math. And so we have videos on these topics at BrailleBlaster.org as well. So if you want to if you want to go a little deeper. There is a spatial math video, so spatial math in Braille Blaster and basic math with Braille Blaster videos. These are real short. And yeah, it's going through the chat as well. Thank you for that. But just very quickly, um, like if you wanted to make X squared in ASCII math, you would type X caret two and then press enter. And so when you first type it, it's gonna type it it's going to translate as literary. It's not going to know that you want math. So you have to tell it. So just like you applied emphasis before, you type the text, then you highlight, then you go math, math translation toggle. It's the very first item under the math menu. The hotkey is control M. And then once you do that, that then tells it to treat it as uh, math. And all of those symbols are going to be found in the ASCII math hub. And I wish we had more time to go over that. I'm sorry that we don't. But if you want to create math, I definitely recommend checking out uh, either our webinar that we're doing on Wednesday or check out, if you just want a quick, quick lesson, you can go to our video for basic math with Braille Blaster or spatial math in Braille Blaster. Not sure if we can go over it all, but were there any other questions before we we finish up?
go ahead and wait a second in case anybody's got any questions they want to send through the chat. But yeah, anything that didn't get answered for you today, um, definitely, you know, check out the videos at brailleblaster.org. Send your questions to uh, BB Support. So I'll send that back through the chat, BB Support at tech.aph.org. You can send questions through there. Cool. And yeah, the, there's going to be a video of this webinar, so folks should be able to review the, the webinar uh, once that video gets posted. Yeah, definitely, Sharla. We are recording this, so we're going to post that recording um, probably by the end of this week. So yeah, thank you, William. That was an awesome introduction to Bro Blaster, I think, to really help people understand just the basics of how to get started and start playing around with it. and. Um, doing some different things with it. And Andrea posted the link for the webinar on Wednesday. So um, I'm going to take over the sharing really quick here so we can do some wrapping up with. Okay, here we go. All right. Um, oh, hold on. So are you all seeing? Yes. So uh, if you've done an FIMC webinar before, then you know that we have these four questions that we ask our at attendees and participants to answer. And the reason we do that is because the Florida Department of Education requires us to. So if you could, I, I've got several different ways for you all to access this evaluation. Um, you've got the QR code there, which if your phone has that capability, you can just use that to access the link. The, um, that survey is also on our events page, which is FIMCDI.org forward slash events. And if you are a Bitly fan, we also have a Bitly link there. So you can use that as well. And so what we're doing for this webinar series to kind of entice you all to do this evaluation is we're going to pick three random people who complete it for each session and you will get some giveaway prizes. You'll get an email. So you're not going to find out now, but you would be getting an email by the end of the week if you were one of those lucky people who will get some giveaways and get a chance to get some goodies. So please make sure you do that survey for us because that's really helpful for us. We have to report that information to the Department of Education. And then I know you all really want to know about this. So if you are looking for that in-service or ACVREP credit, the closing code for this session is software. Software. Which should make sense based on everything we just talked about. So in order to get the credit, you're going to make sure you have that opening and closing code and go to the link to get the credit and you fill it out, fill out the form, and then an email will be sent back to you with your certificate saying that you participated and how many points you've earned. So again, we've got the link on our website. There's a bit.ly link there. There's the QR code. So whichever one of those works best for you. And then also another new thing we're gonna try here is if you would like up to an additional two interviews points, you can go and complete a quiz based on this session on our Canvas site. So if you are a Florida teacher, agency, volunteer person, someone who's in Florida serving our students, you can be a member of our um, private uh, Florida Canvas site. And we have, we'll have quizzes on there for these webinars that we're doing um, this week and next week. So if you're not on our Canvas site yet, you can email me and I will add you so you can access this as well. So my email is there, it's eanderson at fimcbi.org. So be sure to take advantage of those opportunities. And so um, as William said, he is doing a follow-up session for this. This is gonna be on Wednesday from 1 to 2.30. We also have um, Lucia Hasty presenting tomorrow and next Thursday. And that's going to be focusing more on tactile graphics. So if you want some more strategies and tricks and tools that you can use for um, creating your tactile graphics, you want to check those out. And then we also have Kylie Dejuch, if I'm saying her name correctly, 
she's presenting next Wednesday on UEB math and format. So just a couple different sessions to help you all um, get some more strategies that you can use for your Braille and tactile graphics production. So if you want to um, register for any of those sessions, go to our events page on our website. And if you need to contact us, there's our phone numbers. We do have people in the office. We are still working and doing everything that we normally do to provide services to all of you. So make sure you get in touch with us if you have any questions. And Sarah, yes, we did record this. So that will be posted to our website by the end of the week. And so thank you all so much for coming and joining us on your lunch break if you're at work or if you're still on break. I hope you enjoy the rest of your break until you have to come back to school. And I'm going to go ahead and stop recording.